Hey guys, my name is Omar Zajali. I'm a photographer and a videographer, and I will be talking about all things photography and maybe videography. Today, I will be talking about wedding photography. I got to shoot my first ever wedding about a month ago. It was kind of last minute thing. One of my friends was meant to photograph the wedding, but she couldn't do it, so she asked me if I could. And I was like, yeah, sure. So to stay organized, I decided to make a list. I think it's like a list of 10 to 12 things. And this is the list that I'm gonna share with you guys because it may be helpful. First thing was to decide what gear I was gonna use. This was like the most important thing for me. I have a Canon and I also have a Sony uh, a7S. Deciding on these two, it wasn't really too hard. I did opt for the Sony A7S. This thing's a beast and low light. It's extremely light. It's a mirrorless camera as well. Uh, it's really compact, it's not bulky, and I've kind of gone off of the whole bulky kind of style of uh, cameras. You know, this thing you can actually fit it in your pocket, believe it or not. I fit, I managed to fit this in my jacket pocket the other day, so very, very cool. Lens-wise, I decided to go for the 50mm f1.8 because, you know, it's a 50mm and it's a 1.8, man. It's to let in a lot of light. I decided not to take with me anything else like, you know, my tripod because that's just extremely useless for wedding photography. I think if you're gonna go with a bride and groom somewhere and do a bunch of like shots, fair enough, because you have a lot of time to do so. But when it's this type of stuff where it's run and gun, tripod's gonna be extremely useless. Carrying it around with you is extremely pointless as well because it's just gonna be, you know, weighing you down. So I didn't take that with me. What I did take though as a spare was my Canon camera. Just as a spare, didn't I never used it. I also took with me my Sigma. Uh, f2.8 17 to 50 millimeter lens because I love this lens and I did use this a few times too but 90% of the time I did stick to the 50 millimeter lens the second thing on my list was to find a second photographer I will always take a second photographer with me because you need one to be honest with you I called up my friend uh, she's a photographer she's never done a wedding either so I thought this would be like a good chance to kind of get her to be involved too I told her what gear I was gonna use because I was you know, using a 50 millimeter lens, she was gonna use a wide angle lens. We wanted a good range of different types of photos. So she basically said that she would kind of be in charge of just taking all the wide angle stuff. And I was gonna be in charge of taking all the close ups. I'm just trying to catch my breath. <sighs> Okay, and then we made a list of the shots that we wanted to take. We went on Google. This is a really cool thing to do. We went on Google, we researched a lot of different types of wedding photos, and we managed to get inspired to create our own type of photos as well. And we wanted to compile a list for the bride and groom to show them as well, because we were gonna meet with them to kind of know what we were trying to do. And it was a good way for us to know what they wanted from us too. But the bride and groom were very easy. They were just like, do your thing. We just want to get married. We have a small three page list of shots that we wanted. We were very happy with the shots that they wanted. They were happy with the shots that we wanted. Now the fourth thing on the list was to research the venue and research the weather. Two most important things. We had no idea what the, the venue was like. We couldn't go physically to the venue either because it was so far away from the city and none of us drive, I mean the photographer. So we went on the internet researched it, went on Google, checked out the pictures as well. The pictures are fairly amateur, so we were like, if they were able to get these type of photos, you know, we'll be all right. There were a couple of rooms where we couldn't really do much with because there was like, you know, 2% lighting in there and it was just impossible to get any pictures. By looking at the rooms, we were able to kind of determine what shots we were gonna be able to take here, what shots we were gonna be able to take there, what we could get away with and what we couldn't get away with. And then by researching the wedding as well, uh, the weather, sorry, we were like, okay, it's gonna rain at three o'clock in the afternoon, so maybe do these type of photos outside when it's not raining and then once it, starts, once it starts to rain, you can go back inside. That's exactly what happened, by the way. Once three o'clock hit, it just started to pour. Luckily, we managed to do all the shots that they wanted outdoors and then once it rained, we finished up and then went back in and then we carried on doing our things. So yeah, research the venue, research the weather, very important. The fifth thing on the list is to take a lot of snacks and a lot of water. You won't have a lot of time to sit down and eat like a meal or like a sandwich or you know, just sit down with like all the guests and eat because you're constantly taking pictures because not everyone's gonna be eating. There's gonna be people doing other stuff too. For us, the most important thing was to capture candid moments. They wanted all those like, you know, the special moments of smiling and hugging and all that kind of stuff. So we had to be really alert. The sixth thing on the list is to always be alert. Okay, this is very, very important. Uh, when capturing candid photos, you cannot be looking, you know, at the sky or like at the wall or kind of daydreaming. You need to look at everyone and look like a creep. Literally like that, man. You just gotta stare at someone and then once you kind of 
anticipate what they're gonna do. If they're gonna laugh, boom, take that picture. It's gonna be sick. It's gonna look awesome. Uh, and it did. So always just kind of anticipate and always be alert and always look at people. Always keep your camera on as well to capture those candid special moments, which means you're gonna have to take with you batteries, SD cards, chargers. The next thing on the list is business cards. Always take business cards with you. We had a crap load of people ask us for business cards and we didn't have any done, uh, which kind of sucks because I think we lost out on a crap load of work from a lot of other people as well because the pictures ended up really, really good. But yeah, you never know when you're actually gonna be given an opportunity to, to, to do another job, you know, whether it's photography, whether it's like family portraits or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So always have uh, business cards made. Yeah, that is about it. So um, I really hope that this list helps any of you first, you know, first time photography, for wedding. Uh, follow me on Instagram as well. I post all my photography stuff there. Uh, I'm gonna upload a bunch more videos of like different topics, like, like nature photography, concert photography, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, subscribe.